If you've been paying attention to what's been going on in the world lately, you're probably aware of the emergence of AI and it becoming more prevalent in a ton of different fields. So I kind of wanted to take a look at this, even though there's a lot of controversy around AI and what it should be used for, but we're just going to take a look at how we can use it inside Houdini to help us learn Houdini, specifically to learn VEX. So we are going to be using ChatGPT for this. It's a free AI at the moment. You can use it to pretty much ask whatever you want and it will spit out an answer. So let's go ahead and set up our scene and then we'll jump over there and start asking questions. So drop in a geometry node. We're just gonna create a simple copy to point setup. So we'll drop in a sphere, add some scale there. We'll do points from volume, add some point separation, some jitter, drop in an attribute wrangle. This is where we're gonna be doing all of our functions. And then that was not what I was looking for. Attribute wrangle, not rig attribute wrangle. And we'll do copy to points. Drop in a cube, write that into the first input, the attribute wrangle into the second. And let's just drop this scale a little bit there. So we should be good. Let's go ahead and jump over to chat GPT. And this is the interface that we're started off with. Now, I wouldn't recommend using this to learn Houdini in the traditional sense. So asking it things like, what are a SOP solver? or How would I set up an RBD sim, for example? Those questions wouldn't be necessarily good questions to ask it. Probably would struggle to answer those just because Houdini is kind of a niche program in the grand scheme of like the internet. So even though VEX is a part of Houdini, it is more similar to a coding language. It's actually based around, I believe it's C, or at least one of the C languages. So it's going to have a, a lot easier time answering those questions because it has a lot more material to pull from. So let's go ahead and just ask it a question here. We'll do Houdini VEX code for randomizing P scale. And let's see what it gives us. So it's going to start off by just rehashing our question and then it's going to spit out some code for us and we'll see what it gives us. So it gives us this that we can then copy. Let's go ahead and do that. Then it kind of explains what's going on here, but let's go ahead and jump on over to Houdini and just see if this works. And it looks like it does. So sometimes it'll spit out code that actually works. Sometimes it'll spit out code that doesn't work. You just kind of have to plug it in and see if it works. And this can kind of get you going in the right direction, even if it's not the right code to get it working. Maybe it's off by just a little bit. You just kind of have to play around with it and see what it gives you. But it can expose you to the correct way to do things in certain cases. So for the example, this specific situation where we're trying to randomize P scale, this isn't exactly how I would go about doing it if I was doing it from scratch, but it's pretty darn close. So it's creating a float value that it's naming rand, and then it's creating a random number from zero to one. That's what this random function does based off of the point number which is exactly what I would do if I was going to do this myself. But then it's setting it equal to the P scale uh, with a fit. So it is fitting the values from zero to one to 0.5 to two. Now I wouldn't use two lines of code for this. So let's go ahead, let's actually just copy, whoops. Let's copy this part here and we'll just delete that and do this all in one line. So we'll do rand at PT num, and then we're gonna fit that from zero to one to 0 0.5 to two. And it does the exact same thing as what it had spit out. So that's how I do it if I was doing this myself, but it was pretty darn close to, you know, what you would actually do. So you can see that it can be useful in certain situations. However, sometimes it does spit out things that aren't exactly correct. Let's go ahead and give it a different prompt and we'll see if it gives us something that works. So we'll type in Houdini vex code for, let's just do randomizing position. Like I said, this can expose you to the right way to do things or maybe to functions that you aren't aware of. 
And that can be useful even if you're an experienced user. Maybe you forgot how to do something or maybe you just don't know how to do something. It can maybe point you in the right direction. So it's spit out a, th a thing here. So let's go ahead and copy this on over. Let's head back to Houdini. Let's paste this in. I actually just copied that again. Let's recopy that. So we'll now paste this in and see where we have an error. Let's go ahead and let's just head back on over and see if it can give us something else. Let's just regenerate our response here. Don't want to spend too much time diving into that in the video. You can definitely dive into it and try to fix it yourself inside your own sessions, but let's go ahead and copy this on over and let's see if this one will work. So it looks like that one has worked, but we don't have a magnitude here. So go ahead and add that parameter and you can see that we have something going on. So it's creating a random vector. It's setting that or it's creating a vector called ran vector and it's setting that equal to a random value based on the point number plus a different value here, which is going to be the seed value. You can set that to whatever you want and get different results. And then same thing for each value of the vector. So the X, Y, and Z. And then it's setting the position. Uh, it's adding that vector to the position uh, times the magnitude. So it's multiplying this vector that we just created times the magnitude that we set here so we set it to zero, it's obviously going to disable that. As we set up to one, it's going to have the full strength of this randomization. And it's just adding that to the position. So it gives us something that actually works once again. So that's good. Uh, like I said, the first, the first option didn't necessarily work. You'd have to dive into it and see how to correct it. Now, you can just try and regenerate it and sometimes that'll work. Other times you'll actually have to dig into it and see what it's giving you to try and figure out where it's going wrong. But like I said, use it to kind of find the functions that you would be looking for. You'll find that a lot of times, a lot of the functions that you're trying to do are going to give you functions that are similar to things that you've used in the past or seen in the past. And maybe you aren't exposed to the channel uh, floats basically like user generated or user inputs, I guess I should say that you can you can create inside Vex. So different things that it's going to expose you to. Let's go ahead and jump back over. Let's try and give it one more prompt here. So we'll do Houdini Vex code for creating P scale based on distance from the origin. So a little bit of a more difficult thing to do. It's gonna, again, need to give us some different values here or some different functions that maybe we haven't used before. So let's see if this has given us something that will work. So we'll paste this on in and let's see, let's Go ahead and create the spare parameters. So radius, min scale, max scale. So looks like it's jump over the spreadsheet. Looks like it's almost working. Looks like it's setting all of them equal to, ah, oh, it's because our radius isn't high enough. So maybe we set this up to like five. There we go. And then it gives us some random. So that's pretty cool. Did actually work on the first try. So a little bit more of a different approach. And this actually is not anything that it's spit out when I've asked this question before. Uh, this is a different, uh, different response, which is pretty cool to see. So again, here we're just creating a vector, setting that equal to the position. Uh, I'm not really sure. Oh, that's why, because it was doing the length of the position. So it's creating this float as well. Uh, it's called distance. So it's gathering the distance using the length function. So this is automatically going to gather the distance from the origin. And that's going to create a 
value here that they're going to then fit inside of the parameters that we set here. So this is using more parameters than you probably are used to in a fit, I believe. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. Uh, zero to whatever your radius is. Sorry, just a lot of channel floats there. That's a little bit of a roundabout approach to it. Let's go ahead and try and regenerate this one. Let's see if it'll give us something else that works. Maybe something that's a little bit more simple. Give it a second here. It looks like it's wanting to do somewhat of the same thing. So uh, generally the same sort of setup in this one, but it is actually something that should work just like the other one did, just with less customization. The first one I would actually use over this if I was gonna go about it this way, because it gives you the ability to set the radius, or at least this value was the radius. Uh, so different things that you can do with this, it may or may not work depending on the, the complexity of your question. Let's maybe give it one more, and let's make it a little bit more complex. So let's do Houdini Vex code for creating a let's just do creating a sphere and let's see what it gives us because i can almost guarantee you that it's not going to be able to spit out anything that's going to work it's going to take a second this is like i said a little bit more complex of a question let's go ahead and copy that let's head on over to houdini and this i'm just going to drop down an attribute wrangle we're gonna set this equal to a detail and hopefully, yeah, see, so it creates, doesn't actually create anything that actually works. So it's look what I'm looking for with that question, maybe the phrasing was off and actually we would need to give it a parameter, but still doesn't make a difference. It's not actually creating any, any points here. What I'm looking for is it to actually create the points in the sphere. So maybe we'll just, uh, let's see, we'll regenerate that response. Let's give it, give it another shot. See if it'll create it with another response here. So it looks like it's trying to do pretty much the same thing with a lot more. Yeah, so it's actually not doing anything in this one as well. So it's not actually creating any sort of geometry. So maybe we'll try Houdini X code for creating a sphere point cloud. And let's see if it actually gives us something that will create the points. Let's give it a second here. Looks like it's setting up to do so. It's creating some math that it would need in order to create the sphere. Don't know if it's correct. Let's see if it has created anything worthwhile. Doesn't look like actually it's going to, I can already tell because it's not actually creating the points itself. Uh, and it's going to just kind of crash out on us. We need to create, I think we need to create spare parameters. Let's yeah, and if we set this to like 100 points and we recook this, it's not going to give us anything. It's just kind of going through this code, even though that it's not actually creating anything. So just looking at this code, it would need to actually create a point, which it doesn't have the code for. So uh, unfortunately, it may have gotten close looking at this math. It looks like it's trying to do something, but it's not creating any of the points in itself. So wouldn't get anywhere even if the math is correct. So it is, like I said, not going to spit out things that are going to work necessarily all the time, but it may point you in the right direction. For example, um, it is kind of pointing this in the right direction. It's definitely going to be needing to um, use phi and, and theta and radians in order to, to create the sphere. But in order for it to, to do that, it's going to actually have to have that function, like I said, to actually create those points, which it's missing. So that would be something that you wouldn't necessarily understand if you were just um, brand new to, to VEX, but 
you can obviously see that we don't have any points in the geometry spreadsheet. So that may be a question that you'd ask. Then you maybe go to Google and find the answer to how to create a point in order to uh, get this to actually work. So some interesting stuff that you can do with this. Uh, maybe point yourself in the right direction for creating things or achieving the effects that you're looking for, but it may not exactly be perfect depending on what you're trying to do. But I thought it was interesting, something that I haven't really seen anybody try and do, so I figured I would see how well it would work in order to kind of help you out with VEX if you are brand new. And it actually does a pretty decent job for simple things. And these simple things are actually how I go about uh, learning VEX, uh, just creating different P scales and stuff. It's a great way to learn how to do different things in VEX and just kind of get used to working with the language itself. So anyways, hopefully this was something that you found interesting. If you do want to learn more about VEX, I have other videos on my channel that deal with VEX. Uh, just a bunch of stuff on Houdini if you want to learn Houdini in general. Make sure to check those out. I also cover how to do different things in Redshift inside Houdini if you're interested in any of that. But anyways, check those videos out if you're interested. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.